Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Jefferson. I'm here with my medical assistant, Alexa, the best medical assistant in the world. And today we're going to demonstrate how to apply negative pressure wound therapy. So today we have a gentleman with this long-standing lateral ankle ulcer due to diabetes. He's had this ulcer for going close to a couple of months now. Uh, he recently had minimally invasive revascularization of this right leg with a stent placed to increase the blood flow to his leg and to his foot. So it's starting to get better. He has these pockets of redness called granulation that's going to continue to increase throughout this wound so that the skin will eventually close over the wound. The skin will not close over all this white fibrous tissue. But once the entire wound gets red like this, then the skin will be in a better environment to close. So that's what the negative pressure wound therapy is going to do, help increase the granulation tissue. So before we apply the negative pressure uh, wound therapy, we first have to do what's called wound bed preparation. That is, uh, get rid of any uh, bad tissue or any loose tissue or any uh, thick fibrous tissue that's going to interfere with the wound healing process. And as we can see, he's not doing too bad here today. So he's got this little eschar area here, little scarring here and here at the bottom. So I'm going to debride that uh, with my scalpel here and then we can move forward toward putting the uh, wound pressure device on. All right, so just gently go in here and start removing as much as this as we can. We use some topical lidocaine on this patient to keep him comfortable. We don't want to be too aggressive as we're applying the wound vac. We don't want too much bleeding. Otherwise, it's possible that we will continue to bleed into the wound vac after leaving the office. And we certainly don't want that. I see some of this fibrous tissue is starting to come down. We also are using a medication called Santil ointment for what's called enzymatic debridement. Doing what I'm doing here with the scalpel, but slowly over days as the medication is applied to the wound to break down the formation of this fibrous and this scar tissue. These are islands of skin here, which he didn't have a couple of weeks ago. So he's making some progress. See how that's coming up, Lex? Mm -hmm. yeah. and good lidocaine, because we wouldn't have been able to do this last week. Oh, like 10 minutes ago? Yeah, right. area here the area here not too bad how we doing my friend doing okay good I'm using a blunt instrument to clean off any biofilm that may be on the surface without causing any bleeding. The biofilm is this material here I'm collecting on my instrument. The biofilm is this material that I'm removing from the surface of the wound. See it right here. See all that, Lex? Mm -hmm. That's biofilm. It's a protein-based substance created by bacteria.
to protect themselves from the surrounding environment. And what it does, it interferes with the wound healing process, one, by blocking the action of anti, any uh, topical antibiotics and preventing uh, any other substances that the body's trying to use to fight the infection from getting to the bacteria. So we have to remove this biofilm every time we treat the patient. See, that's a little redder now on the surface. It was look, look kind of pink mm -hmm. when it came in, but now it's bright red right there. Yeah, little bumps. Yeah, that's, that's the granulation tissue. And the reason why it's, the bumps are easier to see now because the biofilm was removed from the surface. So now we can see them better. It's a lot down here, yeah. see that? Yep. Got to get that off. If you don't remove this stuff on a regular basis, then it prolongs the healing process. And what may have taken weeks to heal will take months. So the wound bed preparation has been completed. Now we have to prepare the surrounding skin for the application of the wound vac or the negative pressure wound therapy film. First, we have to clean uh, the surrounding skin, make sure there's no oils or anything else that would prevent the film from adhering, sticking to the skin. So you can either use alcohol wipes or skin prep pads and just clean around the wound a good size around the wound, probably a few inches from around the periphery of the wound, but not the surface of the wound because you've already done the wound bed prep and cleaning of the wound, so you don't need to use this on the wound surface itself. Two more, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You got to the sample, so we're going to use that one. Okay. And I got it. That's fine. dry. And the next th first thing we'll do is apply the first layer of film over the wound. Now what you want to do before you start is to cut the size of the film that you'll need. It comes in two, two large sheets in the pack but you cut the size that you need before you start to help move things along more smoothly and so you're not fishing around for what you may need after you've already started. So we have our first layer of film dressing. There's a one, peel it off. It's very sticky, so it can be a little pain in the neck on the glove. Come around my this way. Yeah, just hold this leg over for me, Lex. Right, there we go, thank you. Yep. And just gently put it over the wound. Pull it down, there we go. Pull the second layer off. Now you see a two. Make sure you hit it. The glittons adhered very well. And we'll pull the two off. Leaving the film layer over the leg and over the wound. And the final thing you do is you pull this blue tab off. So now, this first layer of film is used to protect the surrounding skin from drainage that you will get 
from the negative pressure device or the wound back in this case. So this first layer is protective. How is it going to protect the surrounding skin? I'll show you right now. What I like to do is what we call window in the wound. So I'm going to remove film from around the periphery of the wound. Just like so. Just using a pick up and scissor in the shape of the wound. Right at the wound's edge. And that helps the skin out. Yep. So, because what you don't want, whenever you're doing wound care, is maceration. That's that saturation of the surrounding skin with fluid, causes the skin to get very soft, very boggy, start to peel and is a good place for bacteria to hang out. So we do not like macerated skin or skin that's overly wet. All right, Alexa's gonna come around and do the rest of that for me. There you go. There you go. I was like, you want me to stop? No, 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 the picture just froze. Okay. It's because you have an airplane mode. Oh, you know what? You're right. You just forgot for a <laughs> second. Lex is very good at these. She can put these things on herself. When you're on vacation? Yeah, right? So much, for vacation. so much for vacation these days. Staycation. Staycation. Video. Yeah. <laughs> That's my I'm right handed. Alright, and there we go. A well windowed wound. We have the first layer of film dressing on the surrounding skin, and our wound is exposed for the granule foam. All right. So next we will apply any medication that may uh, be necessary, be it antibiotic ointment, enzymatic uh, wound ointment, or anything else the uh, physician or wound specialist wants to use to uh, also better treat the wound. So we'll apply that now all over the surface of the wound don't need to put a whole lot on. Matter of fact, you don't want to put a whole lot on. Mm -hmm. That's just going to promote more maceration. There we go. It's enough there. All right, what I like to do, especially on patients like this patient here, who are especially if they are not neuropathic, that means they are still experiencing pain, is to put a non-adhesive uh, gauze over top of the wound before putting the granule foam on so that it's not painful while the vac is being used and it's not painful while the vac dressings are being changed. So let me get that uh, non-adherent gauze there. Usually recommend uh, oil-based non-adherent gauze. I'm gonna need another one for sure not uh, 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 cotton based or anything like Telfa or anything like that because they will block the action of the wound back. So one more and then we'll cut off what we don't need. Oh. So again, you're not inherent. You want it 
cut in the shape of the border of the womb. We've already pre-cut the granule foam to go over the wound. Again, the same or generally the same shape as the wound and maybe a few millimeters wider than the entire our circumference of the wound. And in a moment, you'll see why. So now we have our granule foam directly over the wound. We'll start with one quarter. Move that up in the air for me a little bit. Okay. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Not too much. The right there is good. We'll put our second layer on. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Move number two. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And the blue tag comes out. Yeah. Maybe two around. Mm -hmm. So the whole what we're trying to do now is make sure we have a complete seal of the drape over the granule foam. It has a little break in the seal here. So it's gonna add a little bit more to the top. And we'll actually put the piece on the bottom. thing that needs to happen is that we need to cut an opening for the track pad. We're going to go right in the center, go right into the second layer of film dressing, get a little lift, and then cut a circle about the size of a quarter or so. So now, when we apply the track pad, we have our connection directly to the granny foam. So this is our track pad. This is the opening to the track pad, which goes to the tube, which will go to the ActiVac, or the negative pressure machine. When you apply uh, negative pressure to an extremity, always have the tube going up toward the body. Not, never down in this direction, but always up. We pull off number one, place the opening of the track pad onto the opening we made into our second layer of film dressing. Pull off number two. And then pull it, take the blue tab and remove it and now our track pad is securely fastened to the granule foam. The tube from the track pad and the granule foam has to be connected to the tube to the ActiVac. So this is the ActiVac side, this is the granule foam side. You see these two tabs, one here, one there. When you place the tabs in uh, to the other tube you want to make sure you don't over twist. If these tabs are broken, then you will lose the seal in the tube. You just go inside, see it fastens in there, just give it a slight twist, and that's it. 
All right, now, everything is connected. Now, before you start the machine, you want to make sure that yeah. these clamps are open. Now, the only time you have to close these clamps is when you get ready to change the dressing. So if there's any fluid in the tube or any fluid in the active vac, it doesn't get all over the floor. Now, I've already pre-programmed the active vac. You want to turn it on now. Okay, do it up. Yeah, okay. I've already set the therapy settings. All right, uh, continuous. The pressure is 150 millimeters of mercury. Whenever I put a wound back on for the first time on a patient, I almost always set it at 150, continuous for the first week. Intensity is low. Intensity is changeable. Here's medium, there's high. But in a patient that still feels pain, I keep the intensity low. So now we are ready to start. Okay, you have an on and off button. So we're gonna see how good our seal is now. Let's see. Yeah, give it a little push. It's a big sponge, so give it a second. There it goes. And you can see the sponge collapsing as it creates that vacuum onto the wound bed. Now you see this bar here. This right now it's yellow. We want to make sure that it gets below this line and turns green. That means that we have a good seal. But somewhere there's still a little bit of leak. And there, oh, it's gone. Oh, okay. There you go. See what happens when I'm going to leave it alone? Yeah, so it's in the back. So we need another little piece back here, right? So you want a nice, quiet machine. The more quiet the machine, the better seal you have. So here we see that the shield seal check is below the line and is green. The machine's not making any noise. We're a very good seal. So I like to cover my wound back dressing with either stockinette or you can use uh, clean gauze. Mm -hmm. Keep it clean. And that's it, my friends. That's a basic application of negative pressure wound therapy. All right. So, so we'll see you next time and we'll follow his progress. Thank you very much. This is Kevin Jefferson, the DC Foot Doctor. Thank you for watching this video. Like it with a big thumbs up. To see very interesting cases and my approach and techniques to dealing with them and to learn how you can improve your foot health, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you will know when a new video has been uploaded. Follow me on social media at DC Foot Doctor. Most importantly, take care of your feet.